Welcome back to the New Jersey Morning Show. I'm Mike Favetta along with Cara DeFalco. A New Jersey town has voted to tackle the Canada geese overpopulation through a controversial method, a math euthanasia using carbon dioxide. Elected officials characterized the goose population in the local park as an infestation that has been a source of inconvenience for residents for the past two decades. The PPAC and Gladstone Borough Council scheduled the initiative for early this summer, coinciding with the molting period when the geese are unable to fly away. Now, while this approach is endorsed by the USDA, it has faced criticism for animal rights activists who deem it cruel and inhumane. Similar methods have been employed in other New Jersey towns in the past, such as Spring Lake and Edgewater. The town argues that the issue extends beyond a mere inconvenience as Canada geese are prolific droppers, with each goose depositing up to one and a half pounds of feces daily. That fecal matter poses health and environmental risks containing harmful bacteria and contributing to nutrient imbalances in the waterways. I feel like there's got to be a better way. <laughs> there's there, there. I mean, the only other way I remember from growing up in Morris County and seeing this being a big problem because you couldn't walk on the sidewalk right. during the migration season or when really the geese would come down and stay yeah. near all the waterways in Hanover Township. It was a problem because they would just put their droppings everywhere. And you, you really, you know, you couldn't walk outside. It was a quality of life issue. And yes, you want a humane way. Uh, the other only way I remember was uh, the local officials told us to, if you find a goose nest, to rattle the eggs and addle them. And that would prevent the egg from hatching. Oh, my but, God. Uh, come on. How often do you run across a goose nest? I know. I was going to say, and, never you know, in my life. <laughs> Yeah, and run the risk of being attacked by by the the mom by the mother the goose. So, yeah, no. Yeah, so there's there, there's issues there, but it certainly is a big issue that's been going on for decades. This is nothing new. Yeah, I I just I and I I have to wonder if there's you know and again and you more than anybody understand you know the climate environment and and all that stuff you know isn't there they don't have like a natural predator somewhere that we can <laughs> work with. That's the problem. There have been other uh, initiatives with the, the natural predators, such as uh, dogs, uh, the, the type of dogs and the breeds of dogs that, you know, chase these Would away them, and yeah. kind of, you know, set the stage to, you know, this is not your territory, but that's expensive and that, you know, takes time to come back and it's not a one and done solution. Mm. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm kind of, I'm with the, uh, I'm, I'm with the animal rights activists on this one. I don't know. I, I guess for me, I didn't grow up in a populated enough area that the geese were really a problem. Mm. Yeah, but. it's, it's uh, it kind of like the wild turkey situation in some towns now, where they tend to be a menace to the town. You know, the turkey, if you know what you're doing, is like kind of edible. The goose, unfortunately, is not good food. It just does. I mean, even I, I would, I would say hunt them if they were edible, but they're just not. They're not. They're not. Well, a New Jersey Hall of Fame is opening at the American Dream Mall. Here to tell us more is president of the New Jersey Hall of Fame, Steve Edwards. Steve, welcome to the show. Hello, hello. I, it was always my dream to follow a geese story, so this is a very exciting day for me. <laughs> All I know is they take their time crossing the road. I like their attitude. They it's do. Like you could wait <laughs> They do. Well, and it's very, uh, it's a very Jersey attitude, I feel like, right? So it goes right along with what you're here to talk to us about. Tell us a little bit about the New Jersey Hall of Fame, Steve. So New Jersey Hall of Fame, we're so excited. We're excited for New Jerseyans. We're going to be opening uh, our entertainment and learning center at the American Dream Complex. Um, we're going to be soft opening in about a week or two. Uh, ribbon cutting uh, is going to be uh, mid-June. We're still trying to decide on the exact date, and then public unveiling in June. Uh, the cool thing about this place is it is the first state hall of fame, entertainment and learning center. There's only four uh, state halls of fame in the entire country. 46 states don't even have them. Mm. And this is just gonna be, I think, a very exciting place uh, for all New Jerseyans to come, all walks of life. And we can't wait for your team to come down and check it out. It sounds exciting uh, for those that have, you know, big families, maybe older generations. Is there something for everyone? What can the audience expect to see? There, there really is. It's 10,000 square feet. It's wow. very interactive, very immersive, the way 21st century uh, museum, which is essentially what this is, ought to be. So although 10,000 square feet, when you start getting lost into the um, exhibits, it becomes much larger. But we have the Model T that Henry Ford gifted to Thomas Edison 
in 1916 on display, permanent display. Wow. Um, this was the Model T that they took their actual road trips in together. One of the most unique automobiles in the world. Uh, we've got a karaoke stage, a karaoke performance stage where you can get up and sing along with a hologram of Gloria Gaynor singing, I Will Survive. Uh, you can uh, sing with White Cliff John, If I Were President. And we take a video of that. You could also share it on social media if you dare to. Um, so um, it's, it's a one of a kind place. It really is the first of its kind in the United States. And I think it's important because now more than ever, People are beaten down with all the bad stories. We need a place to celebrate who we are. We need to feel Jersey pride. I just interviewed Governor Kane yesterday about this. We did a hologram interview with him for our late night Jersey television studio. And he reminded me that when people feel proud, they feel anything is possible about the future. But it's also a place our children desperately need, a place to come and find heroes and wisdom so they could become the future Hall of Famers and they could live fulfilled life, lives. So a very important place for people to feel pride, uh, to find their North Star. And um, we just can't wait to open and, and uh, see the looks on people's faces. Steve, it sounds like such an incredible place. And, and I, I love what you said that, you know, people need that source of, of pride in, in who they are and where they're from. But some of the, the uh, exhibits that you were talking about are so unique and creative. What inspired the idea for this type of Hall of Fame or museum, as you had referenced it? Well, the Hall of Fame was created, believe it or not, 20 years ago, a long time ago. We've had 15 ceremonies. It really took a while to figure out where did we want to be. Very important to find a place with foot traffic like the American Dream Complex has. That's very important uh, for an entertainment and learning center. And uh, in terms of what we've ultimately built, um, it took a lot of due diligence. So there were a lot of uh, state leaders that took their time visiting other museums around the world. And ultimately, we, we just decided you really have to be immersive. You've got to be interactive. Uh, people, you know, want that type of thing. They don't want the museum of yesteryear where we we'd go to the Museum of Natural History and we'd look at artifacts. Uh, that's just a little too boring for, for the average person now. So um, I think this is the high-tech place that we aimed it to be, and I think people are going to find that. You can see some of the pictures I, I see scrolling, uh, scrolling there. But you got to see it in person. That's the important thing. Pictures don't do this place justice. It does sound like a lot of fun. So you mentioned only four other states have Hall of Fames. Why is having a New Jersey Hall of Fame important to the state of New Jersey? You know, New Jersey gets bashed, and I don't think any of us lose sleep, but we laugh at some of the jokes, and some of them are, are probably deserving. But the fact is that it is a state that's exported so much uh, in the way of incredible people who, who've contributed to society and the world beyond. So why not have a place where we showcase that greatness and we feel great about it, but I think more importantly than, than the Jersey Pride angle really is inspiring children with the heroes and the wisdom. They did a poll recently of children a few weeks ago. I saw a pollster talk about this on, on one of the national media outlets. And he said he was demoralized uh, because children basically, large majority of them said that democracy was on the ropes and they weren't so sure that America would survive for another 250 years. You know, we've got our birthday coming up in 2026, uh, our 250th birthday. And one of the main things they said is they don't see heroes and they're not getting wisdom around them. They're not being inspired. That's really a shame because America has so much great stories to tell and so much inspiration uh, but a place like the Hall of Fame is going to be a place that can harness those great stories, in this case, New Jersey stories. And, and I hope we can start making a dent on inspiring our children. Steve, I absolutely love it. What a wonderful mission and motive. When will uh, it be open to the public and where do we go to get tickets or more information? So uh, we're going to be, like I said, soft opening is going to be in a couple of weeks. 
Um, we're going to cut the ribbon in June. We're going to open to the public uh, by the end of June. And then we're open permanently. So we hope starting the summer and into the fall and for many years to come, uh, New Jerseyans are going to come. Ticket prices are priced very, very reasonable. $20 for an adult, uh, $25 for an out-of-stater, much less. I think it's $16 for a child. Uh, we're going to have a special price, much cheaper than that, for field trips. And... Um, uh, yeah, so it's compared to the prices in the, uh, 2024, we think it's a very reasonable uh, price. <laughs> Absolutely. Steve Edwards, thank you very much from the New Jersey Hall of Fame. We appreciate it. And we look forward to checking out the new place. Thank you both for having me. Have a great weekend. He, man, what an inspiration. And, and that's it's so true that, you know, to have that source of, of Jersey pride, I think particularly in New Jersey, I know, you know, I went to state school, I went to Rutgers University, and we had a lot of kids that were like, you know, kind of meh, you know, got stuck in Jersey, I'm stuck at state school. And I don't know, I was always just raised with a lot of pride in, in you know, who we are and where we're from and the, the celebrities and the athletes that we've created here. It's so true, and you hear so much about it, especially the, like uh, he mentioned, the exports that New Jersey puts on national stage saying, yeah, yeah. this person's from New Jersey, or so-and-so's from New Jersey. It also brings you that hometown pride when yeah. you know that he grew up in the town a few towns over from you, for instance. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So that's it's awesome. I can't wait to see it. Guys, coming up next, what is New Jersey's favorite side hustle? We've got the answer for you. Plus, hear the story of a blind musician at Rutgers University. We'll be right back.